Thank you very much, uh, Chair uh, Cantwell. I really do appreciate the opportunity to talk with you and the members of this committee. Uh, on behalf of the STEP program, as was stated earlier, my name is Eric Hahn. I'm the Vice President of Organizational Development at General Plastics Manufacturing in Tacoma. I'm also Chair of our Tacoma Pierce County Workforce Development Council and Vice Chair of the Washington Aerospace and Advanced Manufacturing uh, Workforce Pipeline Advisory Committee. <laughs> Said that in one breath. Um, <laughs> The uh, company, General Plastics, started in 1941, actually a couple of days just prior to uh, Pearl Harbor, and uh, started as a plastics company, obviously, in a whole different vein. Uh, it's grown in the last 73 years to be a leader in the polyurethane world, and we provide products not only to aerospace, but defense, nuclear containment, marine uh, construction, outdoor signage, and tooling as well. We also employ about between 170 and 180 people. Uh, I say between because we are fast growing and uh, a lot of that is because of what we're doing here in this country, but a good part of that is, has to do a lot with the STEP program and what the opportunity it gave for us to enter new markets. Um, as the committee considers uh, creating a permanent STEP program, I wanna share our experience uh, that we had with it because uh, I think that it is, uh, it is one that can serve as a model for other small companies to not only engage in international opportunity, but to grow beyond just the parameters of their own backyard. Uh, in recent years, uh, we've been working, trying to get into the European market to no avail. Uh, I, admittingly, I don't think we really understood what the requirements were and how those differed than, than the aerospace requirements here in this country. Um, a lot of that has to do with FST, uh, fire, smoke, and toxic toxicity requirements that are a little bit different in Europe. Uh, we, through the grant provided by STEP, we were able to go to the JEC Paris 2013 and 2014 air show and also eventually to the aircraft interior show in Hamburg. It was at JEC that we discovered what the requirements were for aerospace products in that country. We were able to look at what our uh, competitors were doing. We were able to talk directly with some of the people that uh, you know, were in the aerospace industry in Europe, and they helped us give us some real insight into what the requirements were and how we were gonna have to change things. So immediately when we got home, we started putting our chemists back to work to really refine our products so it would meet those standards, and they were successful. In fact, at the Hamburg Air Show, we introduced those products and uh, had a lot of interest because of it. Our goal was really five-fold. First, we were going to establish a physical presence, which we did. Uh, second, we were gonna meet existing customers, which we did. Third, we were gonna research our competitive products, which we did, and fourth, uh, connect with local vendors, and uh, finally, of course, develop new relationships with potential customers. The results were, again, we were able to develop a product that is uh, compatible with the standards that the uh, European uh, Union uh, requires. Uh, we were able to get two distributors, one from UK and one from South Africa, uh, and, finally, and we're in the final negotiations with one from Spain. We were able to also uh, add approximately $100,000 in new sales initially. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but consider the aerospace uh, sales cycle is anywhere from six months to a year. Here's the really exciting news. We're now in negotiation with Airbus Tier 1 and Tier 2 suppliers, and those are estimated to, a, to provide anywhere from one to $2 million in additional sales. It'll also mean the employment of 10 to 15 new people. And by the way, Senator, I want to personally express you know, my gratitude for all the work that you've done with veterans and workforce and especially aerospace. We are very happy that you are Senator. We, uh, we've utilized those tax breaks and we are able to hire a lot of veterans. In fact, we now have uh, uh, in the last uh, year hired probably an additional uh, 15 to 16 people that strictly that are veterans. So all of this is just indicative of the opportunity that is, was available through STEP and that we t were able to access. Uh, our Washington uh, people helped us out immensely as well to, to connect and understand 
how, to, how we were going to be able to uh, uh, access this program. This program provided opportunity for us as a small business that, quite frankly, I don't think uh, what we either would have never thought of accessing or would have been a long time coming. Uh, in the aftermath, we have now hired a uh, international person that is a, a, a marketing director from a fairly large company that is really helping us take what opportunity we had from this program and really develop it so that, you know, in the future, I think we may not be a small business after all. Thank you. Well, let's turn to some questions. And, and I did want to follow up on, you know, trying to... Uh, uh, characterize the benefits of the program in specific terms. Obviously, as my colleague just said, we see the benefits of it very clearly in our states, but maybe not all our colleagues do. And so, um, you know, you've clearly articulated that there are risk barriers to trade, uh, mostly that, uh, Ms. Burden, you talked about um, high costs, high risk, obviously um, very small marketing budgets. And uh, the smaller you are, the less uh, experienced uh, team of people, you know, to assess those opportunities. So, Mr. Ha I, the, the first three of you and Mr. Uh, Hendricks, I wanted to see if we could get some comments about whether you were exporting, what, how did you, I mean, is this just the impetus to make, you know, I was in business and I can just tell you, you focus on shipping, building and shipping products. <laughs> you focus on that. You've got to get the product out the door. So is this just the STEP program is just providing that extra incentive that is helping businesses focus on this? Is that, is that what it does? It just breaks down that risk barrier? Uh, Senator, I, I, I don't know if it's, if it's uh, necessarily, um, I guess here, here's 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 my my feeling on it. I, I think what the step program does is that it uh, allows us to take our dreams and formalize those into actions. Uh, you know, as as was stated earlier, you know, we we didn't have uh, a lot at our disposal in terms of <laughs> of uh, technical expertise, in terms of. Uh, uh, you know, um, money to actually go overseas. Uh, we were doing very well at home, and we're actually very satisfied. I mean, because Boeing, being one of our largest customers, uh, we were, we we thought uh, we th we were very content. And I I think what the what when we were approached by this program, that you know, all of a sudden, I think it just turned the light bulb on, and and as I said earlier, it allows us to take those dreams, because we had already always talked about, you know, someday we were going to go overseas, someday we were going to be this great exporter of materials, and as I, I think this gentleman said earlier, you know, we were doing some international, but it was coming through uh, distributors that uh, were based in the United States that were actually selling to people overseas, and they were utilizing our products in the mix, but we never saw the actual end customer, and we never really engaged in that actual end customer. And so this program uh, gave us, opened that door. It allowed us to, to not only see and talk to that end customer, but to create a relationship that ultimately culminated in a very strong uh, sales pipeline. And so you would have just waited till a later point in time to create an export strategy, or it just gives you the ability, you, you had one in mind, but you just couldn't have, the, you didn't have the resources to execute on it. We didn't have the resources to execute on it. And, and as I said, you know, yes, to answer your question, we would have probably just waited. Uh, we would have looked at, you know, for um, secondary opportunities through companies based in the United States that were doing business overseas and, and probably would have been content with that for a while. But uh, gladly or thankfully, this program came along and, uh, and I think we're, we're, we're uh, not only jump-started our, our efforts, but I think, we're, uh, I think we're doing great because of it now. Good. Well, I have a few more questions um, from some of the testimony. My colleague has brought up this issue about state and federal match, but also there's an issue of whether the program should be allowed to be spent over two-year period of time as opposed to one year. And I don't know if anybody wants to comment on that. Maybe the people at the... Yes, Mr. Yes. Hahn. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, 
you know, as I spoke earlier, the aerospace selling cycle is, is, is fairly long. Um, I think that uh, having it spread over two years would be highly beneficial. I mean, it would uh, not necessarily that, that maybe um, we, uh, maybe, it was, maybe it was not necessarily critical in our, in our case uh, that, it be, you know, that we have that second opportunity because I think, I think that we did have grant money for that, to go that second year as well. But what that demonstrates, I think, is that uh, because of the sales cycle, that if you're able to, to not only um, make that initial contact and then sustain that relationship and build upon that relationship, <laughs> by being able to attend subsequent shows, I think it'd be highly beneficial. Somebody's mentioned, somebody on this end, I think, mentioned forecast sales, which I think what they're basically, most companies have very prudent booking of sales forecasts. You know, even if they close a big deal, they'll book that over several quarters or several years just so that they guarantee that it'll actually come in. And so I don't know who, if somebody down here mentioned that or wants to comment on that, but. I think from an accounting purpose, someone believed that those were actual sales. Is that correct? No one remembers who mentioned forecasting. Somebody gave me a number on actual sales and then forecasting yeah, I, sales. Yeah, I did, Senator. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, the, the, the forecasting was really projecting what the uh, potential for this uh, several deals that we have in the, in, the, in the offering now that we're currently negotiating, uh, you know, that though, the money that comes in is going to be significant. We just don't know what it is right now because we don't know what the volumes are going to be. But that's why I made the comment that we're looking at additional one to two million dollars, depending upon you know what kind of volumes they they uh, they start out with, and ultimately you know uh, if that if those volumes are sustained. Uh, we have every confidence that uh, that uh, just because of the way aerospace works, that once you're spec'd into a product. You know, it's pretty hard to, to lose it unless you lose it yourself, you know, through poor quality or, or, or performance. Um, so we anticipate that that, um, that that $1 million is conservative and that the $2 million is likely or potentially uh, likely, and then who knows where it will go from there. <laughs> 